There's been a lot of interest in our Loaner Pool Management Extra since its release in LabSite and AllSite 7.8. So in this video, we want to explain how it works. First, we'll install the Loaner Pool add-in and get it configured. Then we'll create a primary Loaner Pool for all computers, monitors, and other devices. Divisions can be used to separate everything out into separate sub-pools using the scoping dropdown in case you need to manage separate computer groups in different locations. You can also use account permissions in Key Configure to restrict access to certain computer groups so that pool managers can only see the loaner computers and devices they're responsible for, though we won't go that far in this introduction video. In this video, we'll stick to the simpler web-based setup, so if you need to set up account-level pool access, reach out to us at support at sassafras.com and we'll be happy to show you how. First, let's install the Loaner Checkout add-in from the Extras panel on the Settings page. If you don't see this page when you log in, your account may not have sufficient permissions, so you'll need to reach out to the main administrator to step through this process or provide you with access. Just check the box next to the Loaner Checkout Extra and refresh your browser window. Now you should see the Extras page in the left sidebar. On the Extras page, you'll find the new Loaner Checkout Extra, along with any other add-ins installed in Settings. Click Open to launch the app, or add it to your dashboard and launch it from there. In the top right corner of the Extra, click the gear icon to go into its settings. The lifecycle stage listed under Available for Loan is the only attribute the Extra uses to determine which computers and devices are part of the global pool. The default selection is stocked, but you can choose something else here or even create a custom lifecycle stage on the Columns panel in Settings. For a computer or device to be considered on loan, the appropriate lifecycle stage has to be applied, and the On Loan To field has to be populated in the computer or device record. That's why the On Loan list is initially empty, even though Deployed is the default lifecycle stage for all computers. So all we have to do is change the lifecycle stage of our loaner equipment to stocked, and it will immediately be listed in the loaner checkout extra as available to loan. When you check a device out to someone, the lifecycle stage is set to deployed, unless you change that to something else in the dropdown, and the end user's name is added to the on loan to field. In most cases, it's sufficient to leave default lifecycle stages as they are, but the interface is very flexible, so make whatever changes are necessary in your environment. You can also define default loan lengths and check-in times on this tab. Next, head to the Terms tab. You can add a URL to an eSign form, or a link to a Terms and Conditions doc here, or paste your Terms and Conditions language directly in this field. The Loaner Checkout Extra automatically sends confirmation emails to users when they check out or return a device. You can customize the email's subject line here, as well as CC and BCC email addresses on the Email tab. The Filtering tab is for advanced options, like specifying a specific division for all loaner equipment, or using tags or filters to define your pool. If you want to create custom lifecycle stages to identify loaner equipment, head back to Settings and choose the Columns pane. Scroll down to Lifecycle Stages and add new subcategories under any of the default ones. You might create one called Loan Pool under Stocked, for example, and another called On Loan under Deployed. A word of caution, don't add more new life cycles than you need. Although new drop-down items can be changed after you add them, it's not easy to delete them entirely after they've been created. Reach out to support at sassafras.com if you need assistance. Also, don't forget to head back to the extra settings to select your new lifecycle stages after you've created them. Next, let's add computers and devices to the pool by changing the lifecycle stage of the pool equipment to the one selected under Available to Loan in the extra settings. To avoid manually changing each computer one at a time, let's install a JavaScript that will allow us to update all the records at once. Head back to the Scripts panel in Settings and add the Change Lifecycle Stage script. Now we can head to the Computers or Devices page, select our loaner pool equipment, and run the script from the menu in the top right corner. 
head back to the loan or checkout extra and all of the relevant hardware should be listed in the available to loan list. Once you're finished configuring everything, we're almost ready to start checking devices out to end users. This part is pretty easy. On the main page of the extra, under ready to loan, you should see the available computer and device count. Click the computer icon, select the computer or computers you want to check out, and then click check out selected. When you select an item to check out, you'll be prompted to add user details as needed. Start typing a username and a list of suggestions will appear. If you don't see your user's full names, that's because the server can only see OS account names when users log in. That's okay as long as the username can easily be associated with the end user. But what if you want the full name of each user included in the checkout or user record? In this case, you have a few options. One, in the key configure admin console, open the users window, find the record for the user in question, add the full name as an alias, and save. Two, create a new record by manually typing the full name during the checkout process, and then merge the duplicate user records together in key configure. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, the 7.8.0.4 release does not have the ability to add the full name to a pre-existing record from within the web interface, but that feature will likely be added in an upcoming build. If your installation is higher than 7804, merging duplicates may not be necessary. Number three, the best option is to populate the user full name, email address, phone number, and other details from Active Directory and schedule a regular sync to keep them up to date. All you have to do is to install and run the import user information script from the script page in settings. And then decide how often you want it to sync and set up a schedule. The script queries AD for each username and imports relevant details into matching user records. Then, when you search for a user's full name in the loaner checkout extra, details will populate automatically. If you use the AD script to import user details, everything should auto populate when you start typing and then select the user's name from the drop down on the form page. If you're not using the script, or if some data is missing from AD, you can hand type or paste into the relevant fields and the data will be saved to the user's record. It won't be written back to Active Directory, however. Click Complete and the devices have been checked out. A confirmation email will then be sent to the user's email address. This confirmation page can also be printed as a receipt or kept as a paper record. The On Loan section of the app should now list any computers and or devices that have been checked out, along with device details and the due date, which turns red when something is overdue. To check a device back in, step through the same process. Once returned, it will immediately be placed back into the pool as available. If a user has more than one device checked out and you check only one of them back in, the system will prompt you with a list of the others in case you forgot. There is also a renew selected option for extending a loan, so you don't have to check things in and then back out. That's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out for support at support at sassafras.com.